Welcome to WrestlingGreenPost.com. Um, on this week's episode, we're going to start out. We didn't have an episode because somebody got married. Yeah, I got married. And also, uh, before we start the show, I'd like to send some prayers out to uh, Mickey J's family. Um, as many of you know, he was a referee for WCW. Um, he had cancer before. It was in remission. The cancer's back. So if we could send some prayers out to everybody. All right. Well, um, we're gonna start just talking about the week because, uh, frankly, um, it didn't seem like there was too much really going on this week. Not really. No, nothing really important, I must say. Which is funny because there was a pay per view last Sunday, and no one cared. Uh, apparently, um, no one watched it. I mean, so uh, at least we're not got, the only ones. It got one. higher ratings on Raw when they showed the replay, when they showed footage from the pay per view. The national pay per view did itself. So. Yeah. Well. That's, I mean, I don't, um, why do you have a pay-per-view two weeks after you had one already? That is the dumbest thing in the world. And at least, at least when they had the Raw Smackdown pay-per-views, at least it was two different brands having pay-per-views. So it kind of makes more sense, but not as much as these ones. And nothing happened. I mean, what, Del Rio locked Cena out of the cage, which was kind of cool. And, like, the final match is okay with him beating Punk and then R-Truth and Miz coming down and stealing uh, CM Punk's gimmick. <laughs> And, and, went, and, you know, after the match and Del Rio winning the title, which is fine. But the rest of the pay-per-view, who cared? I mean, I could, that match, that match could have just been at whatever the next pay-per-view is, or Survivor Series or whatever. It didn't even need to be right now. I mean, it was, it was terrible. I mean, who cares about it, honestly, because there was nothing going on. All right. Nothing they really... Let's talk about, about uh, Mark Henry. His injury count is now up to four people. And a rumor has it that at the pay-per-view during the day that they had to change part of the ending of the match with him and Orton because of the injury. Oh, yeah, because you said this is the chair thing he was doing? Yeah, well, Mark Henry's not the safest wrestler in the world. He's gotten better, though. But, I mean, I had him in my top five last week. We'll get to our top five at the end of this episode for this week. But maybe you'll be surprised. I'm pretty sure they will be. <laughs> the 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 uh, maybe hopefully tens watching this at home. The tens and thousands of tens. Those with the benefit of internet. So, no, uh, Mark Henry. I mean, like I said last week, I like him, but I think he needs a lot more work on the mic. And on, you know, he always sounds like he needs to eat. Like he's looking for something to eat. Probably so Jerry Lawler last week. Yeah, exactly. Like Lawler last week. Um. There isn't too much really to say about it. I mean, he's an injury guy. RVD was known, is known, still known for his whole career for injury. He remember broke out of business, front two teeth. <laughs> yeah, that was <clears> just <throat> recently too. Yeah, so I mean, some guys are just a little, you know. I mean, also you know his gimmick kind of works for it. So you got to think that maybe they aren't telling him as much as they would another guy. Be a little more careful. He's a big, strong guy. I mean, they forgot to kayfabe the table with the Lawler smash thing. I mean, American Vince McMahon was livid at that. Not at those guys, but at, like, the, the ring crew guys. But that's what happens when you change the script eight times in one night or whatever. But still, I mean, he's not known as being the safest guy. Well, an interesting fact that I ran across. Um, I ran across an interview. It was a radio interview with Haku. And he talked about back in the day when things were still kayfabed and the heels and the faces stayed away from each other that they were staying in a Marriott hotel, there was a party going on in another hotel, they went in, they saw faces, so they immediately went to the back and they sat in a dark corner. Uh, three, there were three guys that came up that said to, uh, I forget who was with Haku, but said to the two of them, you're not with those fake guys over there, you know, the fake wrestlers. And he stood up and asked the guy, he said, um, do you want to see how fake wrestling is? And apparently bit the guy's nose off. Yeah, he, he confirmed that he said that. Yes, yeah. that was on that interview, and I, I found that very interesting. There's been a rumor for years, and he pretty much confirmed it. Then again, he said it. It's not like someone else said it. I mean, it could be. It could just be him, you know. Being goofy. Well, him keeping in character. I mean, in some way, people you are always still a character, regardless if even if you're now. Do you think that CM Punk wants to be going out known, like, for doing something that wouldn't be in his character offset. They don't. They still don't want to be. They still got. There is some level of keeping that always exists, because 
you're only known, it, unlike a movie actor where you jump different roles all the time, a wrestler, you're, you are this guy, you're one guy, you're not changing all the time, so you're still kind of known as that character. You know, I mean, people live that their whole careers, so I mean, you gotta think of like, you know, kick gimmicks and stuff like that. All I right. mean, it, it's a character, I don't, you, if you want to be known as being, you know, the baddest dude on the face of this earth, you're gonna still act like that when you're off the camera. I'm not saying that was his gimmick, but I'm just saying in general. I think Bill Goldberg lived up to that off the camera, but... Well, he tried. He just didn't live up to it. It was pretty bad. Yeah. All right, well, what's your uh, next set of role, uh, how roles? How about... Uh, yeah. Your next set of news. How about your opinion on uh, the Cody Rhodes, the original IC belt? Well, the return. Kind of original, yeah, the return of the mostly original IC belt. I mean, the, the, the W in the middle, as I put an article up on the site... I said the, the middle W, the top there, kind of looks like the, the new WWE Legends logo they use. The, we were looking at it earlier, and if you look on the sides, it almost looks like it's like two Fs mirrored on, on each side of the side I thought side it looked plates. like the Weezer logo or it does. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. I think it looks like the Wonder Woman. I like it. I mean, whatever. I, I like. I was, I was thinking, um, I was talking about this earlier with someone else, that it might be interesting if they changed the belt. But not the, the design, but the, the, the color. So that... You know, we remember Warrior had that bluish green. Cody Rose has it white right now, but it doesn't mean that someone else couldn't just change it to be black, maybe for like, which is kind of a standard one. But someone else could change it like different colors. That could be kind of cool if they really want to do the customizing thing, which is what they seem to be doing with all their titles anymore. They could just change the color strap, but it looks like a real title. It looks like something I want. I think they need to start doing with all the titles, especially the U.S. title could be cool, but look like an old, uh, old WCW title. The WWE title because it's so, like, out of yeah, date yeah. now. Well, the world title's fine, mm -hmm. even though I'm starting to think they should just get scrap the title in general because why are you having two like champions? Well, but why are you having two champions on your show when you already have both shows on SmackDown, on Raw? It doesn't make any sense. You might as well just have the, you might as well call it the SmackDown title. Which is stupid, and have two world titles have been on the same show. They've got well, four technically when he was champion on Raw, and then they have you know Cena or Del Rio. Whoever but technically, it is one's kind of crappy. they only have one world title because the other one's the WWE title. <laughs> That's true. I guess if they want to cut semantics, I guess it wouldn't matter anyways. So apparently, you can defend the one belt all over the world, and the other one you can only defend in the WWE. Yeah, well, how many times are you going to see the world title defended outside the WWE? Probably. It's like the Intercontinental. We were talking about that a long time ago. The Intercontinental can only fight on continents. So it's the greatest heel thing. No, the heel, remember the heel thing? He needs to make an inter like water title, inter aquarian title, where he can only defend it in the water. It's not it's not legal on the ocean. So if he gets so if he gets pinned on land, he can say it doesn't count. He only gets pinned in the water. Well, also the Intercontinental belt before Cody Rhodes changed it. You can look it up. It's a fact has Antarctica on it, and I don't ever remember them defending the belt in Antarctica. I'm sure they probably kayfaved it, like they've said about all those Brazilian... <laughs> <laughs> remember Pat Patterson, what, didn't he win the title in Brazil? Or something like that? I thought it was in uh, the Blue Oyster, the bar from... <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. Uh, whatever. I mean, I love it. I think they just need to go to more titles. Just keep doing... Just sweep all the new titles out. All the... They can even kind of slightly update them because they kind of already are, but that's yeah, cool. Um, All right, speaking of pay per view, uh, Sin Car versus Sin Car. What's your thoughts? Oh, uh, finally they changed the attire of one of them. The the new one. Well, the, that was the black that was guy. Monday. Black. This was color at the pay per view. They were still blue versus blue, or yeah. as the announcers were saying, the darker Sin Car. They were calling him Sin Cara. Well, didn't he like darker? His skin two. was darker. I don't know if they meant that the like that he's darker because he's Evil? bad, or darker as in it's a darker blue. He put a he's using. He put a little more spray tan on. Maybe he's I, I like, don't know. But then they said Sin Cara one, Sin Cara two. Yeah, well, that's, that's at one point they said Sin Cara two was the original, and then they said Sin Cara one. I don't think they could keep track of it. So. No, well, it's because it's hard to keep track when they were both in the ring flipping around. I mean, you couldn't tell who was who. I also, couldn't. the fans were chanting. There were more than one chant of "This is boring." Um, I just don't think. Now that they've changed the colors, maybe that'll help, but I don't think that the fans really knew who to cheer for because it was so confusing. I, I think part of that, and then I think it's just that fans don't care about either one of them. No, I really... I, I just, It's kind of a new terrible. character. Maybe if Sin Cara was around for 10 years and this happened, maybe fans would be interested. Yeah. Like, if there were two Rey Mysterios, but 
which there are, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> two, like, Rey Mysterio Juniors, you mean? Like, well, there actually is two Rey Mysterio Juniors. That's true. Yeah. That just happened recently, too, actually. No, I mean, it's Sin Cara. I could care less. He's not going to be in my top five. Unless something really drastically changes. You can't see my top five yet. No, but I was looking at mine. I'm uh, sure he wasn't on there. I hope not. He was number four and number five. What else? You got anything else? You got any other news? Um, well, what about the... Uh, Vince sent out a, a memo that he wants the announcers to stop kayfabing the actual weights of the guys. He wants to use their real actual weights. Thoughts? I don't know why they would do it. I don't understand it. Uh, maybe... I don't know. Maybe they thought that... Maybe it has something to do with the wellness policy. It's thinking off the top of my head. Maybe it has something I to do with... I thought maybe to give it a little bit more of a realism, sort of like UFC, since yeah. they think that UFC is one of their competitors. Well, remember there was that big stink. I don't know if you remember reading about it. Triple H saying that UFC needs to update their image to match WWE. Like, which is funny because you know every UFC pay-per-view makes like a million buys, so it doesn't matter. So I don't, I don't understand it. I don't know why they need to up the thing. WWE needs to follow them more, which you said, like you said. So um, the other thing is, is it could be on one scale. Vince thinks by outing the real weight of some of the smaller guys, it'll make them want to get bigger and possibly guys that they've had to go after in the past, like for weight problems, like Big Show or Mark Henry. Um, having their real weight put out there maybe will cause them to yeah. want to lose weight. It's Otherwise, true. I really... But the other question is, is how many times do you hear their weight on a show? Like, I mean, who the heck goes to their bio page and sits there and stares at their bio and goes, oh, the weight's changed this week, it's 202. I mean, I don't know if anyone's even really going to notice it too much. Overall, because how many times on Raw do you hear them? Can you actually hear them say their weight? That's Half the time, I don't even pay attention to World title matches, because they say or... that... Well, the world title matches, when they say that... When the announcers and everyone, both guys are in there... They don't say their weights. They already said that when they came down. They only just say their name and who they are. They don't say, like, this guy's this weight, you know, so... I, Apparently, people it's don't... A, it's a weird... It's a randomly weird thing that they, 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 they pick. Well, apparently, this. people don't pay too much attention to any of that stuff since uh, Kofi Kingston originally was from Ghana, yeah. was was from Jamaica. Right, right. One yeah. week, and the very next week, he's from Ghana, yeah, West them. Africa, they and nobody really... really well, I don't know if you remember, but... Uh, man, this is like five years ago or something. Jericho, Benoit, and a couple of the other guys. Who? Jericho and who? Jericho and the man that should now be not mentioned. That they said, they instead of switching where they were originally from in Canada, they switched where they were residing in. Yeah. Atlanta, so Benoit Georgia. then became, it, it said who? like, they said residing from Atlanta, Georgia. Well, that was his physical address. His physical address. So, and then I think, I forget where they said Jericho was from like New York City or something like that. I could see that. But Hollywood, California. Well, remember, it's that way for the Rangers, I guess. Maybe that's what they were thinking. But why would... It's such a randomly weird, like, switch up. That one makes more sense, though, than the weight. Wait, do you think I care? It's not like wrestling's real. Where wrestling was real... Whoa. <laughs> if wrestling was real, then weights matter. You know? You know the difference between... I mean, and we already know the difference well, between Big Show and Rey Mysterio in terms of size. We don't need to sit there and learn every... Well, yeah. the other They're thing like is shade probably a couple pounds off some of these guys. The other days. thing about the weight class is the weights don't really matter anyway because Rey Mysterio won the heavyweight championship twice. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's I don't know. It's a really there's some weird stuff going on to me. I kind of like it. I kind of glad. In some way, I think they're dropping kayfabe on purpose. Just with that, I, I tr and I think this is mostly Triple H's work. There's a lot of things that you know. Sinkara 2, or whatever you want to call it, the, the, the evil Sinkara, that was worked off a real story. You know, it was because the original Sinkara got caught with steroids, they had a, they, so they brought in his arch nemesis of all people to be him. And uh, they're using that as a real story, and I wonder if that's why they're doing it. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of, it's a weird thing. It almost be something to see what's going to go on with it down the road. It's randomly small as it seems to me. Um... Also, let's see, um, so Raw drew a 3.05, which mm -hmm. is 428 million viewers, which is... You mean 4.28? 4, 4. 4. Yeah, yeah, 428 million viewers, <laughs> it's like more than a Super Bowl. Uh, 
viewers, which is is up from what it has been. But right. uh, Mark Henry versus John Morrison lost three hundred fifty thousand viewers. It's because it's John Morrison. I don't know if it's Henry. I think it might be. It's more Morrison. If you look I traditionally don't at Morrison care about stuff, Morrison either. if you look, yeah, if you look traditionally at his stuff in the last like six months, him and Evan Bourne. Who? Oh. Yeah, both of them. They're ra they have the lowest ratings on Raw every week. No, no surprise. They're, yeah. But uh, the funny thing was Triple H's vote of confidence gained one thousand, or I'm sorry, one million one hundred sixty-three thousand views. That's because that's because you said that the I know you said this before, and looking that the twelve band match you said lost a lot of ratings, right? Yes. So they gained them all back because people finally like, oh my gosh, is this finally over? Yeah. But I like the twelve band match. It was interesting to think they put a forty minute match. I, I just, just granted it started pretty much the major raw roster. I just like didn't Ross understand Snack the roster. point of it. It came out of nowhere. Well, they announced it. Uh, it was announced over the weekend, but then, yeah, it, but but then it, it just made no sense. There was no build up. There's no story. No understanding. Like, why are these guys? You don't mean for match that big. You knew that like they had common enemies and slightly common enemies. You know that like Del Rio and Cena and Punk and Del Rio. I don't even remember all the people in that match. There were so many people, it's hard to keep track of. Which maybe that's Apparently there was job. 12. That's quite a lot. Air Boom, who don't look like a tag team. At least they got a name, I'll give them that. It, but. It's the, about the dumbest tag team yeah. name I've heard have, since like, the Ding Dongs. They have matching attire, though. Like, they have the same color, but Bourne wears all this black, and then Kingston just wears the color that Bourne wears on the pants. They need to look more like a real tag team. That's, that's oh, annoying. I also Either think... Kofi needs to wear pants, and they both look like... That it sounds weird, but they, they would need to like look the same, and I don't know. I, I think people would like them. I think the tag team division, for the most part, is dead. Um, when was the last time there was an actual tag team that I wasn't two guys to put now. together? There weren't two guys just put together. They kind of had the two names. Um, I can't think of one off the top of my head. London and Kendrick is one of the last. Kinda. Ones. Kind of, but they didn't have a name. They well, were just London and Kendrick. That, that's they true. did wear, At least but they, they did, matched. But they wore the they same had, attire and they stuff. They had one entrance song they came exactly. out to. It wasn't, okay, this It wasn't a mix out, of songs or anything? That, yeah, it's, it's, I think, tag team. Actually, I think, one of them, I think one of them came out. They used one of the, one. I think they both used, like, London song, and they both came down to it. It doesn't matter. But they still wore, they still were a tag team, kind of. They needed a name or something. Everyone online used to call them the hooligans. Actually, the, cool. the Hard Man. Dynasty, that might have been one of the last... Oh, yeah. Tag oh, the Usos, they're a tag team, but don't care. Still kind of using that name, but anyway. Speaking of Uso, remember he one of them got the DUI, right? Uh, that would be Jimmy. Jimmy Uso got a DUI over the weekend. Yeah, uh, whatever. They would be looking into it, like, all they gotta do is just make a phone call to the... Did it happen? They got pulled over, like, hey, what? did he get in trouble because we're his employer and we'd like to know. Sure so there's... It takes two seconds. Yeah, there would be hard to be video from the camera because... Oh, I don't know if they can get that themselves, camera. but... I don't know if they can get that, but they can still... They can inquire, I'm pretty sure they're in business. They're the employer of the guy, I'm sure they can inquire. I mean, they could do it for Jeff Hardy. Alright, so, uh, Tribute to the Troops, which will be taped on December 11th, 2011 is going to be in the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that. I mean, I don't know anyone cares. They have the rappers and oh, no. all the Last year was what? Uh, two matches? Three matches? Something like that. P. Diddy was there, right? Who? No. P. Diddy. Whatever his name. He's yeah, his name again now. Every week is yeah. a different name. Someone. Um, they had a bunch of other... Uh, I don't know. Like, it was terrible. I didn't even watch it. There I just was, saw like the clips that they showed. There was some country guy. I I don't remember who they all looked like. It was bad. All right. Um, so Shawn Michaels, uh, WWE's hinted that Shawn might be part of the Triple H uh, coup storyline. I think though it'll be like how he was at WrestleMania. Remember when he came in during that week before WrestleMania or whatever and then told Triple H he could not beat the Well, he's going to be on SmackDown. It'll be like that. He's going to be on SmackDown next week. There's a DX reunion. Um, one of the things they talked about is that the person that's behind the whole Triple H thing um, may have set <laughs> him up to Vince fail. Again? Yeah. May have set him up to fail from the beginning because of the whole DX ties. Well, it's obvious. It's 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 everything. He just doesn't like the idea that he's giving up power, especially because it's his daughter. 
to daughters, you know, it's through his daughter by proxy. So it's, God, I mean, why do they have to do, why do they have to do another Vince McMahon story? Essentially when they ruined CM Punk, which is funny, they're kind of going back now to using CM Punk more because he uh, now sells more merchandise than CM. He's the number one merchandise guy. So now it's funny, that that they, the they dropped all of that punk stuff because McMahon didn't like CM. Then all of a sudden the record, the information starts coming in from all the merchandise sales. And it's like, uh-oh. Punk's the number one merchandise. The yeah, thing is, you got, but, you got, but you got to put him in cool stories. That's what made him. That's what made the reason why he sold the shirts. If they just have him in a match where it's a big deal, main event against him and Del Rio, I could care less. I want. I like that anti-authority thing. It's not. That's not gonna work. With it's dumb. Well, one of the talks was uh, Austin. Apparently, in an interview said that he'd be willing to do another match. Um, he said his top pick would be. Would be CM Punk. Uh, that is my phone, so I'm gonna go turn it off. <laughs> Should have did that before. Um, Keep busy, mate. One of the talks was uh, Stone Cold CM Punk, which could possibly be a double main event for WrestleMania. Go on, Mick. Go on. We're keeping uh, this. We're doing it live. You never know. This is live TV. It's like Monday Night Raw. You never know what can happen. All right, we'll move on to the next thing. So, U.S. Someone could come through this door. We could have a wrestler walk right through this door. It's a shock master. He'd fall through. <laughs> Break my door. You better pay for it. Um, U.S. theaters will be showing Bound for Glory. And I will think that two people will go. Well, the ticket prices are $15. It's cheaper than the pay-per-view, at least. And Kinda. apparently the big match that they're... Saying right now is RVD versus Jerry Lynn. What, Bound for Glory? I thought that's the one with Sting and Hogan. RVD versus Jerry Lynn's. The... Who cares about that? They just had that at the, the All, All X Division match beat review. Um, they're Who also, cares? They're also, TNA On Demand has a chat with the stars of Bound for Glory. Um, it's open to the first 200 people. And the entire weekend package is five dollars. So, you know, saying it like that, it sounds like you know when you go to a site and then the ch the, the uh, pop up videos of chat sites. It sounded like that for a bondage porn one. Bound the the stars of Bound for Glory. I think most of TNA's pictures, and it's TNA. TNA presents Bound for Glory. It just sounds sound like gay porn. See, exactly. Hard justice. It's only five bucks. Hard justice. I know, I know. Who, who thought oh, that no, was remember on that DCW because it was hardcore justice, so it sounds even worse. It's twice as Probably the less we say about TNA, the better. Well, hey, you know, it comes on in a minute, right? We could be actually watching this and talk about it before we put out the video, but you can tell There's we don't care. Nothing to talk about. Um, <laughs> There's one or two things I, I actually like, um, but still. On the TNA good. side, Hogan did reside. Yeah, he TNA, did resign. so. The match will happen. Maybe. We'll find out. Unless his leg gives out for some reason again. So, um, an interesting fact is WWE Live, the actual website where oh, fans yeah. can post pictures, <laughs> was shut down because of nude photos <laughs> of China and Tiffany. Yeah, and the China one was from her porn movie. It wasn't from, like, the like, boy or anything. I can just imagine, like, the image just being, like, planted right up on there in the site. Was Tiffany on Play Playboy? Is that where her screen uh, I think so. Yeah, like, one of, like, the cyber one or something like that. One of many different yeah. sources, I guess. So, I, I just think it's funny. Yeah. It, it's funny, wow. but also, um, you gotta think that, that at some point, there's a line. Well, they can't, they, they can't promote pornography. You got. I mean, uh, no. I, I'm, I'm talking about as a fan. Oh. It, it might seem like a good idea, you know. If it's like an LOLs. I did it for the walls. It sounds so funny. Hey man, let's put a. You got someone gotta have some just respect and courtesy. It's, it's like the stupid. episode of The Simpsons where they talked about cutting the head off the statue, but then when Bart actually did it. Yeah. And then they're like, oh. Sometimes. Hey, well, the thing is, is, it's still down. The live. I think. Yeah. Well, that's the way. So now you now no one might not have the live at all because of some two idiots. I it doesn't be easy like that though. You know, if it was YouTube, they just take it down and cancel the guy's account. But no, the reason we're gonna keep it down will probably keep it down forever. But I don't know. It's stupid and it's really really dumb. And whoever did it is just you know and thanks. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, not like I used it, but the idea is cool. It'd be like if someone put on their Facebook page. 
Uh, I shouldn't say that because someone will probably go out and do it. Blame me for it. I oh, they're putting it on that. your Facebook page. <laughs> well, good luck finding me. So, but no, I mean, it's just it's an idiotic idea, and the fact that they have to even go through and do it, it's, it's something's dumb. Okay. Um, <laughs> so The Rock is going to appear on a three-hour Raw, and the date for that is 11-14. That's right before Survivor Series, I think, right? So, uh, I think that's because he's... Promo. Gonna, he's probably going to wrestle. At Survivor Series, not I, Raw. I would That'd rather... Be dumb if they had him wrestle Raw. What a waste of uh, money on I, that. As far as Survivor Series, um, I think instead of seeing him wrestle, I'd much rather see... I think that they're going back to the Survivor Series matches a little bit. Not like it used to They've be. They've been toying with the for a while. I'd like to see Team Rock versus Team Cena yep. much more they, than I'd like to see Rock, Rock and Cena. Rock wouldn't wrestle, but he would be like the captain where he picks the guys. Yeah. And Cena would be a captain and wrestle because he will wrestle. Uh, well, I think he should wrestle. And then what it is, they can keep, he can keep dogging the Rock for, for backing out. I'd be like, I'll wrestle, but you won't wrestle. Keep building up the WrestleMania match. Now they're talking about doing a best of three for uh, Rock. And the one be Survivor you, Series. Why would you buy a best of three? I, I know. I want to see Rock's a point. special appearance guy. Exactly. The idea sounds cool in the fact that you get to see Rock in three matches. So let's be honest, no one's going to win this in a, in a, a 2 0. If they do, there's going to be something happening. It's not going to happen. It's going to be 2 1. So it means you're going to see him in three matches. But the idea is really cool that if you only see one time, it's a one time only appearance of Sunday, Sunday, Sunday at WrestleMania. But now you, you lost it. You lost the probably WrestleMania buy for me. I could just buy one of the other ones or buy it on DVD and watch one Rock match. I'll be okay. Unless. The best of three ends at WrestleMania. That's mm. I think that's what they might do. But it's Survivor still, Series, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania. You do your big three. Still, you can do like that. Be smart. Look at some of their pay per views. Still not as good as one. The last three pay per views have had almost the same matches. I, yeah. You know. Well, that's why, why am I going to like buy a month apart? Why am I going to buy another pay per view if it's the same match from the the month before? Yeah. I uh, know. I agree. I mean, the same with their shows. They do a lot of, you know, it's this guy, this guy, and then the next week, this guy, that guy. It's the same matches. All right. Are you ready for our top five? I'm ready for my top five. I think I am ready for mine. We'll start with you since I started right. last week. All right. Number five is Bully Ray. <laughs> is that guy still around? Yeah, he is. I'm, not all of his hair is, but, I mean, he's still around. Why? I, I don't. I don't understand. What's your What's your number five? Bald really? guys with sideburns. Oh, <laughs> what? You didn't explain why. It's your but you, you have to say yours. You oh. say both of them. Um, <laughs> my number five is El Generico. Okay. All right. Um, now I mean Bully Ray. I like him. I think he's the best heel in TNA, and I think one of the reasons why is that. He's never been that character in any other wrestling league. He's kind of completely reinvented his character. And that's what's cool about it. What other heels can you really remember in TNA right now? There's the really crappy Mexican dudes. There is really, really bad Immortal, which is the worst name ever for a, a faction. You got Joker and Lex Luthor. Oh, yeah. Well, jo no, Joker's a face. What? No, no, he's a heel. He's a face. How? No, no, Sting's a face, dude. How the, cause Sting's Joker's a face because he's been wrestling Hogan and Batman. Immortal. Batman's there. Uh, Superman, I think, just turned heel. Bane. Bane. How, how can Joker be a face? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it's TNA. They, they even even TNA will make the, the what, what would logically be a heel, he a face and face a heel. But uh, what about yours? What about El Generico? <laughs> El Generico is on the list just because it's El Generico. And also, um, I've been watching a lot of his matches lately. Uh, some of the newer matches online, and the guy's just funny. The guy. <laughs> Not just, even just being funny as in a scripted, but spontaneous. Uh, I watched a match where, I think it was in Chikara, or it might have been another independent league, but um, the guy who was wrestling botched a move, and El Generico just played to the crowd. It was great. It yeah. works. I mean, no, I, I mean, he's a great wrestler right now. I'm not, like, great as in, like, greatest of all time. But Actually, I think as far as is one of the comedy type wrestlers. So Kinda. I think he's actually got a lot of talent. Alright. Well, um, number four. Well, let me say mine first. Apparently I can't works. remember my number four. Uh, R-Truth. <laughs> okay. What's yours? Santina Morello. Alright. Um, we talked about R-Truth last week. 
Same thing. I, I like that him and Miz uh, interfered in the Hell in a Cell. I yeah. like, for some odd reason, R Truth comes off as being kind of a thug to me in, in a way. And I really, I really enjoy it. I mean, he's more than the Miz in that thuggish way. Miz is like the calculated guy, the guy that is gonna, like, he thinks things through. Truth? No, man. Everything's a conspiracy, and I'm just gonna start doing stuff. I mean, I love it. That's why. I, yeah, exactly. It's little so. Jimmy. Little Jimmy's talk. I, I didn't quite understand the, um, the black sweatshirt thing. Oh, that's, well, think about it. When they're running through the crowd so that the security wouldn't see him. But that's, but that's like old school, like wrestling mentality that you, it, think about it, it's a character, not a character, but it, it, you got to think wrestling is an entity. And if, let's say Miz and R-Truth tried to buy a ticket, they could still say no to him, right? So they got to, they got to, they got to buy tickets and then come in incognito, running through the crowd with hoods and that. It makes sense. I love it. Jericho on his, I think it was on Twitter, mentioned it, it was like an old Bill Watts, like UWF story when he, when they bust in, wearing all black, had the, the, they, they got the cell closed and they just beat the crap out of Del Rio and Punk. It was cool. I like it. Sadly, it should have been CM Punk that, that you know, that they pretty much have made Truth and Miz CM Punk it, 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 with the original Punk character. Because if you, if, if, if McMahon would have liked Punk from the original, he'd probably still be fired and be interfering in Hell in a Cell, coming on Raw's Every and that kind of stuff. Do. Yeah, how cool would that be? And disrupt your main events. Disrupt. I would be disrupting random matches. I'd disrupt like 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 there might be a night on Raw where somehow like something happens behind the camera and like something falls or something goopy and it's Punk. He's just there to cause punk chaos. Falls? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, what about Morella? I mean, I have been... Um, well, he was on Raw this week, which <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been on Raw since. No, he um, hasn't been in a little while. I think after Kozlov got released, right before no, yeah. Kozlov got released. They should have kept him for him. They should have been just a good comedy tag team. Yeah. I kind of liked it. I don't know. It's funny, though, that they keep all these guys that no one cares about. At least I don't. Like, I have these guys on NXT, and Tyson Kidd can still have a job. But yet, like, Kozlov, even though I don't like him as a wrestler, the, the, the entertainment thing with him and Santino, they had a good rapport, I thought, as a, as a team and stuff. It was a team. I actually thought of them as a team. Um, Santino Sadly. is on the list. Well, it was good to see him again. Um, and it was definitely good to see him actually win a match. Did he win? Yeah, he won the match. Who did he beat? I don't remember, but he won. Oh! Oh, that, uh, um, Hassan, Ahmad? Yeah, oh yeah, that guy. The guy that, I, I yeah. That's, no. you know, as much character as this piece of paper. Yeah, that was, yeah, I got terrible. stand that guy. What's... I don't know. All right. Um, well, I guess we'll be going to number three. Uh, Miz. <laughs> you got Archer and Miz. Yeah. Well, I, uh, uh, go ahead. What's your number three? Mick Foley. All right. Um, I'll just speak mine real quick. Like I said, Miz, because he's the more calculated of the bunch of truth, and I think he's got like a plan in a lot of ways. The way he dresses and stuff, too, just kind of fits into the character. But, I mean, we kind of what talked about him a lot. What if recently. he is the little champion? Truth can be very a very sad man in the future. <laughs> it's very calculated. <laughs> um, he was dragging him along for the story. I put Foley on the list because he's been very, very. I don't know if it's he's taken too many chair shots to the head and he doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> or it's an advertisement, but. Not once, but twice in a span of a couple weeks, he's tweeted about being either on Raw or backstage at Raw or at the paper. Yeah, video. Survivor Series. He's been saying he's going to be the ref. And then takes it down like, oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. So I don't know if it's an on-purpose advertisement. I, actually, I think it might be because if you look at, like I said, with WWE doing all this like pseudo-real things with like Sankara and... Punk and all these other things, they might be just doing that on purpose. And he probably is working for a WWE. There's rumors about that for a little while since because he, he's under a TNA contract and he hasn't been for a while. I, I, you know what? He kind of does come off as a basket case in a lot of ways. But Foley's not the kind of guy that comes off as that. He's usually a pretty intelligent guy when it comes to I saying so things. Too. And you know, if he says, if you, if you accidentally tweet someone once. Like, forget to, to DM direct message somebody. That's one thing. But when you do it more than once, there's a reason for it. There is a reason for it. Maybe he's the one that put the nude photos on. 
He, he, wow, he's, he's, <laughs> I guess he's thinking there's a conspiracy too. He's really behind the scenes. Uh, number two? Number two, Road Dog or BG James in TA. I like him more as Road Dog. I'd consider him number two. Not that kind of number two. Alright, uh, what's your number two? CM Punk, he fell down. Fell on. down, fell down the wrong one, huh? Or from the wrong one. Um, I did like the ice cream bar shirt. That was awesome. Oh yeah, that was great. That was that was the greatest thing. WWE, we want them. Well, um, not just I the ice cream the, bars. Well, there were ice cream bars recently. My brush showed you. I, I, that. I, I meant when the I shirts, it. but yeah, I oh, want the ice oh, cream I'm bars sure too. Oh, I'm sure come out. Um, but uh, no, um, Road Dog. Really will we buy them? We will eat them on the show. Road Dog. Oh, we should do that. Road Dog and Billy Gunn have a new radio a real online show. Uh, it's called the hashtag OUDK. Hashtag isn't like when you uh, mention something on Twitter. It's like hashtag and it's oh you didn't know. So basically the show is called oh you didn't know. That's really believe good. it or not, it's really really good. Basically it's it's Road Dog with a camera like has it like up to his face and all and all this kind of stuff. And in the first video or the second video, I really can't remember now. There was Scott Steiner. Apparently Scott Steiner was a hundred, top five wrestler of all time for me. This is crazy awesome. Like, I want to meet this man. I want to, I want to hang out with him after hearing Petey Williams' story about him. Just, oh my gosh, he'd be the greatest guy ever to hang out with. And Might be the last guy you hang out with. Well, that's, well I go out in glory. I, I won't get anybody simpy, but that's okay. His, uh, his video that he had for the... That like weightlifting. Oh my this, gosh! One that of is, the most impressive things. I've yeah, ever it's seen. great, man. Um, so they have a new they have a new online show. It's, uh, episode three just came out. So the fan Ro of Venice. <laughs> oh, it's much better now. Um, but Road Dogg's cleaned himself. Well, apparently, he was really bad in the drugs and alcohol. But he's a rather funny guy. And Billy Gunn, I didn't put him on the list because. Road Dog seems to be more of the star of the show. He's the one that's really like he's out there promoting himself, man. He is. He is. I actually thinking about. It, I actually think that the Outlaws, the the, the New Age Outlaws, are probably one of the best WWF tag teams to ever be around. They won. I don't know how many tag team titles. It was. It was cool back in the day. VKM, not so much. Yeah. I find yeah, it funny yeah. though that um, that BG James Road Dog, whatever you want to call him, is the only one to break. The Armstrong curse, and yeah. I think it's because yeah. he never used the Armstrong name. That's probably it. But no, I mean, the newest one, him and Sanjay Dutt were in India. Awesome. And I think they were, looked like they were filming or doing something for like an Indian reality show or something where they, they make an Indian, like a, a guy that looks like he's maybe trained in wrestling a little bit, but to become like maybe, for all I know, it could be Was a teenager. Was it Jinder Mahal? Is that who they were training? <laughs> it was Kali. Finally, someone gets some real training for him. So. I don't know. I mean, he's just a really cool guy. And you gotta admit that, like, in a lot of ways, yeah, sure, whatever. He might not have been the greatest wrestler, him or Billy Gunn, but they're entertaining. And honestly, when you look back now, it's a lot different when you look back. I think you, you didn't realize. And also, apparently, Billy Gunn knows how to put matches together. And all the videos that they put up, Road Dog has these matches or shows these things in the back where Billy Gunn is like, and then you go off the ropes and bam, and I fall to the ground and you run it, man. I don't know if I could follow up Billy Gunn's, like, his things, he has everything laid out. It's, it's one piece backstage it's with like, him. But it's awesome. Man. It's great. The show is awesome. I definitely, I'll, we'll put this in the show notes. I'm going to start putting show notes at the bottom of every video. It's definitely something to watch. It's, it's only a few minutes anyway, so. I think the most entertaining thing for me with Billy Gunn in the last couple years, I ran across <clears throat> a story where... He was wrestling for this league in Canada. Apparently met what's referred to as a ring rat, uh, who was at the time another one of the wrestlers' girlfriends. They started seeing each other, even though he was married. And she ended up going on, I think it was YouTube, and showed the text messages, played the different... Uh, audio, oh, yeah. their conversations, and there was a whole big thing with that. I thought that was the most interesting thing to involve Billy Gunn in so for me. So, why did Punk drop on to number two on your list? Well, uh, there just really hasn't been much with Punk. Um, you know, he really didn't look good in the cage. They didn't really do much with him. Um, and then Raw, 
just if you think about it, it's interesting that they had him drop the loss to Del Rio, not Cena. Shows you Cena's power once again. Even I'm not saying he has like this backstage clout that he's like an a-hole or anything. I'm just saying that like you know that like there, there's a protection of Cena, whereas Punk they don't care about as much. Even though he's not the number one merchandise guy, but whatever they don't care. All right, I guess we'll go to our number one. So number one, um, that is I have to steal a look for a second. Cody Rhodes. All right. <laughs> You're gonna be surprised by mine. Triple H. Uh. He shouldn't be on that list. He shouldn't be on my TV. So, alright, why Triple H? Um, I actually, I think that he's done a good job as the CEO, you know, story-wise, not that he's really running stuff, but, yeah. um, I, I, I think that he's done a good job. Really, I haven't seen anything in the storyline that would get a vote of no confidence uh, everything is not really his fault. No, no, uh, uh he can't help it. And I mean, he got the most cheers from anybody on Raw Monday yes, night and the paper star. That's because he's an established star, though. I mean, you know, it'd be like if Austin appeared. Austin's gonna get a huge re response, regardless. Undertaker or anything like that. Who? <laughs> so when was the last time we saw that? Guy? That picture of him being bald. Did you see that picture? It's a picture of him bald uh, at an airport. He bald, man, like, like, full bald and had a, um, I think it was like a wool cap or something on. Yeah, I, I was wondering if he's getting hair plugs, maybe he got his head shaved. He hasn't been on Raw, he hasn't been around since WrestleMania, maybe, like, Larry Zabisco, remember? In yeah. TNA, he lost that, that, uh, head shaving match, because he was gonna get his, go get his head shaved, so he'd get the, uh, the hair plug stuff. I don't know, if, if he comes back bald at WrestleMania, though, oh man, people are gonna be like, what's going on? He's gonna look like Gene Snitsky, then. Remember when Stitsky oh, shaved his head and had the goatee? As long as he doesn't have the green teeth. Well, he was all clean shaven there for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he looked weird. Stitsky always looked weird. Human. I did kind of like him for a little while. But uh, my number one was Cody Rhodes. Well, I mean, we already talked about the Intercontinental title. But ever since WrestleMania, when I watched his WrestleMania match, I thought he was really good then. A little more like old school, in but it, it, it's probably because he's got two older, like you know, he's got his older brother and then Gold Dust, and then, and then Dusty Rads, <laughs> Dusty Rose. I think I said Rads. <laughs> That's a cool name, though, Dusty Rads. Someone should steal that for like an independent gimmick, please. So like, he's just he's kind of an old school the way the way he looks at things, and he can speak, man. I mean, he is. I like the mask thing. I love that, you know, that he thinks he's ugly. I hate the, the mask. It's just cool. It's just like, he's so old school in that the old way of logically thinking about wrestling. And the other cool thing is at least he uses his real name because, you know, all these new third generation guys, they're not letting, like Michael McGillicuddy and that. They're not letting, well, they're not letting them use his, their real names. The, I mean... Cody Rhodes has ran them with the ball to me, and they haven't given the world title. They've given Ziggler, they've Thank given God. Swagger. The thing is, build him up. Let him. He doesn't need that title for two or three years. He can sit and just ride around. Just the, the idea of bringing the title back. A lot of people are going to start liking him for it, especially if he starts promoting like the old school values and stuff with it, like he's been talking about saying he's the greatest champion ever. I just like him. Well, I think it's funny because he's Dusty Rhodes' son, but. I would care to wager that his favorite wrestler of all time is Ric Flair, which is kind of funny because Flair and Dusty were known as having this yeah. big feuds. But well, that's probably why. He probably knew him really good when look he was at, a kid and stuff. Look at the way that, that Cody has dressed. Um, yeah, that's true. When he did wear the knee pads, he always wore them down like Ric Flair did. Uh, didn't he do a version of the figure four leg lock at one point? He might have. He might have. I think um, he did when he was with... Uh, Le Le Legacy? Yeah. Is that what that team called? Yeah. He's, he's also, he also had a pretty boy gimmick. You know, Flair was always a pretty boy. That was yeah, pretty much true. his gimmick. I mean, he's called the nature boy. So, like... I think it's funny, because you see some of the guys... We can see it because we, you know, we're around for the, the older guys. To see some of the newer guys come in, and even some of them that aren't even trying to copy wrestlers from 20 years ago... Uh, Jack Swagger, who's obviously in love with Kurt Angle in some way. Um, and Jim Ross is in love with him. <laughs> so, But Dolph Ziggler, Billy Gunn... Um, yeah, it's weird how that works. 
they still, a lot of people, like, I, I actually kind of think that wrestling is cyclical. A lot of people believe that. Some people don't. But it's weird how some people almost inadvertently cyc cyclicalize wrestling. Like you said, Billy Gunn, Dolph Ziggler, looks like Billy Gunn. I mean, it's... Well, TNA, it, I, TNA you have uh, Robert Roode, which is kind of an amalgam of, I think, uh, Ravishing Rick Roode with the Mr. Perfect mixed in with Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Yeah, you kind of, yeah, exactly. But it's funny, it's the ones that work. That's, they're kind of stereotypes, and they're wrestling stereotypes. There's, you know, even Cena is a wrestling stereotype. He's Hulk Hogan. Everyone's comparing him that to that now because that's I, his I disagree. I think he's Ultimate Warrior. Oh, well, I can see he's, that. Too. He's that guy. But a Warrior, was... it gets over with the adults, even though he's for the kids, and it doesn't make sense. We can't figure but it Warrior out. Warrior was over for the Warrior was pretty much Hogan too. He was more of an amped up version. It was like if if Hogan took e drink energy drinks like all the time, <laughs> just like pumped energy drinks through his veins, because I mean it's the same. But it's just, it's an archetype. H Goldberg, would, you know, his character was an archetype that that could probably work now. We haven't had a big streak wrestler, uh, especially they, man. They did someone new. Like I saw that they did that commercial for Brodus Clay. Oh, on Raw, I don't not that yeah, I like another guy, the guy but another guy like that. that we're going to talk about that goes back and is copying another guy. I think he's a modern day Taz. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I think they could, they could, there's a lot of gimmicks that they can kind of rehash, kind of modernize. The gimmicks that I want to see come back are... No, everybody's copying the gimmicks that went over. I want to see somebody copy a gimmick that never went over. Um, independent wrestlers, if you're training now or you're getting in the business, somebody, please, for the love of God, copy Iron Mike Sharp. The guy was a genius. <laughs> There's a bunch of those weird ones, like Sean O'Hare in 2004, whatever, when he came to SmackDown and he had the Way of Mercy kind of gimmick, and it was like a devil's advocate. Dude, that could be great. Imagine if they started doing like viral videos, like on YouTube and and on their webs on WWE.com or TNA. Not that anyone watches it, but imagine like just it's some of the right things. Now. Imagine some of the things you could do with some of these old gimmicks. You could modernize them. There, I mean, you can make new gimmicks. I'm not saying you can't, but there's a lot of these older stuff that can come back because it's been so long. I, I mean, look how well the old school Raw did. That yes. was that was really cool. They've actually started to use some of that, by the way. They actually started to use when remember like like in old superstars and they showed that old school Raw where they have the match and then they have a guy come up in the corner and they and it's like a guy. Yes, those were great. They started using them. Yeah. They started. They were bringing them back, and I think it's because when they did that old school Raw, they're like, oh, dude, this is actually pretty well, cool. Another thing I'd like to see. They always talk about. We we know they always do the well. It used to be SmackDown versus Raw games, which this year it's WWE. WWE. 12. They always try and figure out that other game to do, and they can't come up with ideas. I think a really good idea would be do a game that, that kind of plays like the regular game, but the twist is you have so many, if you have 30 guys in the game, you have 15 legends, you have 15 guys now, and the twist of it is the legends actually pick the entrances and the music and everything for the modern guys, as if they were wrestlers back when they were wrestlers, and vice versa. I think it would be a really cool one. Yeah. With all the legends in sports games now, too, it probably could work that way. They should just... I mean, they that. I saw that um, Vader is in uh, WB12. I don't know if I knew that beforehand or not. That is awesome. Yeah, uh, and they just... Their website, just, they've been updating it, and they're adding new characters. There are, like, 12 characters that they haven't announced that yet. Monster, they have man. just, like, gray... I, I, I don't... They should... I, I think they did announce early on that Macho Man was going to be. There's a game. bunch. There's a bunch of blank spots at the bottom that I don't know if they've already announced them and they just haven't put them on the site and they're doing because they're doing like they're updating guys like they'll all of a sudden go. They got a page for them now where it has like their info. But man, there's a, there's a lot of room for like new guy like random dudes. Man, it should be cool to see some random dudes. But well, I know that uh, Demolition have been announced and they just showed them on there. Do. Yeah, they both been announced and apparently Vader. Lawler, it said his DLC. It had he's the only one that's listed as DLC on the website. It has like a it, like his background's different. It has like a little like tab. It says DLC, but uh, we'll see, man. I, they're, they're gonna be announcing more for that, which is gonna be cool because I, I really want to. I really want to try it. I'm kind of hesitant on it because I like the eleven. But go back to face buttons for the games. So I don't know, but I can't believe we just went from talking about our top five <laughs> to to the video game. Video I mean, game. it's not like it's off topic. It's not like we're talking about banjo and kazooie or something, but. 
But, um, all right, well, I guess we better uh, cut it because we've kind of run a little long on this one. So check out WrestlingRingPost.com. We'll be putting more information up. Uh, just give us a holler. And if anyone's got any wrestling videos that they want us to review, I don't care if you're a league or just a, a person that wants to send us some stupid wrestling video. Or if they're 20, 30 years old, we'll yeah. still review or, or like a wrestling TV show or a sitcom <laughs> Any anything anything really wrestling, wrestling related, related. It, it can be you know Santa Slay with Goldberg is the, the evil Santa Claus I've seen which it. is on instant watch we could watch it on there on Netflix but if anyone's got anything to send it to uh, send us an inquiry on wrestlingringpost at gmail dot com I'll so we'll get an address and you can send us a video um, we're, we're more than welcome to review any of that stuff because we don't care it's fun and if you go on a website and you think it's funny to post naked pictures it's not funny no no so just go to wrestlingringpost.com and uh, we'll be doing another video probably next Sunday see you guys later see you